Okay, now you can really see that. And we're just going to start to throw some of our pre-glaze onto here, perhaps. Uh, some Van Dyke Brown, some other things. Now, we'll probably see some striations on this because it is printed with uh, the old style, the, the, well, old style, with an FDM printer as opposed to as opposed to your regular resin printer. It will be interesting to see just how absorbent this resin is. I don't think I've painted uh, this type of resin with the oils yet. Well, FDM printed stuff with the oils. There's some Van Dyke Brown. And again, what we're looking to do is uh, keep it in line with some of our Moria stuff here. So kind of give it that, that little bit of a glow. Uh, so Landress, this is uh, part of a whole bunch of stuff that are imprintable. Had sent me uh, actually quite a while ago. And I wanted to try and paint these in tutorials, but a lot of the terrain pieces are just too big. These just happen to be small enough to fit. So yeah, it's, uh, it's all are imprintable. He's got, uh, I think I showed you some of the Elven terrain. And now we're, we're then just going to be a little bit drier here, but it, it seems to be sort of soaking in. We're not even going to try and wipe this stuff away here, I don't think. Might have to throw some more of the Van Dyke Brown out here, whatever, and uh, maybe some more of the, the Spinel. But I need to get some Moria stuff going here, so because while we're going to have certainly have our Moria Dwarves, our Khazad-Dum army, as well as our Moria, you know, goblins, drakes, dragons, Balrog. Let's get a little bit of that S. Fultum into here. And then we're going to have to start putting in some of our lighting effects here, too. Uh, check out was at the herdstone. That's right. Yes, the herdstone. That was uh, a piece of terrain in some ways uh, similar to this. I don't know. Maybe a little, little bit of thinner. Get onto the brush here. All right. Uh, now we have to start working in some of the red here. It's a little bit of Fanchon Red with the S. Fultum. Trying to keep that a bit on the drier side here. That's why we use the cheap old craft brushes, right? Because, well, destroying those is not so tragic. All right, now we got to try and sneak some of our there's another one that's nice and beat up, right? Uh, so, Tiago, I just brushed on some, some of the same Badger Steiner res that I do with everything else. And here we'll throw in some of our red into there. That's the fluorescent red. This is why we have a, a bunch of it sitting out here because I knew we would need a lot for in here. Get that glow established down here. Hopefully it stays on our little holder here. So again, more of the red, maybe a smidge of the orange mixed in with that. So yeah, this is uh, our imprintable. Did a whole bunch of Moria terrain. I would I would go check it out. It looks really really good. And obviously, if people have printers that can handle this sort of thing, I think that'll be really good for your tables. Start to lighten this up a little more here. A 
red, uh, the fanchion red now, because, well, this whole facade here sort of needs to have some glowiness, doesn't it? Back to, again, some of our fluorescent red. You can see, while well, we sort of stopped uh, with our pre-glazed stuff, and now we're... Uh, see, the oils makes this so much easier. Again, uh, check out the session we did on the Herdstone. I think I have a shortened version of it on the YouTube channel as well. I guess we could use a little more of our red here on this. Up at mostly again on this uh, part of the facade, not so much everywhere else. Let's get uh, some of our lighter stuff back into this. We're going to have to get some of the darker colors out of this here brush, but now you know why we always have these beat up ones around nearby. It's a really Start to get some of our lighter uh, lava in here. Well, not lava, our, our molten metal. So, yep, just uh, brushing on the Steino res. That's all it took. Back to some of the red and the orange here. Yeah, I think it was just uh, it was just the olive green Steiner res. It's pretty much all I had on hand right at the time, so I just said, "All right, well, we'll just use that. Good enough." Again, just trying to shove all that stuff down in there. A little bit of the orange and the red again. Just try to make sure I got at least all the primer covered. And it, it certainly is uh, does make all of this so much easier here. Again, that's the fanchion red little bit of our orange. How about that? That's a little bit too hard of a brush there. We'll clean out one of our Blending brushes here. We're going to see if we can maybe start to add some of our lighter fluorescence into this or a little bit of our brilliant yellow pale. And just in between, I think maybe add a little bit of the thinner to this as well. Because we got all the crazy little lines in it though, I don't know how much of a pin line wash I'm really going to want, but I don't know. We might just have to go that way here. Let's see what happens with that. Uh, does it take too long? I think the herdstone, wasn't that the first terrain piece that we painted with oils, I'm pretty sure? Then we did the uh, some of our, a couple of our buildings for a Rohan board. Hopefully our imprintable is still around and hasn't fallen asleep. Or said, wait a minute, well, he was going to be painting my piece of terrain. So again, our imprintable has a lot of, and not just, you know, Lord of the Rings type stuff. I mean, this could be for anything, right? This could be for D&D, &D, whatever. It's, it's a dwarven forge thing. So this, again, it's got a little bit of the center in it. 
just to help it to flow. Uh, I think there was a part of me that was thinking about saving this for our November stuff, our month of shadow and flame, but we have a lot of things I believe that we'll be able to paint up in November, so got a lot of creepy things that should work well. All right, I'm just going to get rid of that with my hand. All right, here we got some of our orange. And you can see there's just um, some dry brush effects there. Starting to think about, okay, where exactly should our object source lighting be? Because it's gone all the way out to here, so it's going to have a significant impact here. And this whole facade... Uh, that, that pattern's a little bit soft right there, so we'll have to kind of rebuild that somewhat. Yeah, let's get some of our lighter reds onto that. Well, reddish-orange, anyway. Had to almost uh, do a little bit of stippling there. And how long have we been doing this? I don't know, 10 minutes max? 15 minutes? Uh, not too shabby, right? This would have taken a lot longer just to get to here with the acrylics, rest assured. Well, especially since the any acrylic fluorescent paints would have been super uh, translucent. Uh, this is that, but really anxious to get to this part here, that very distinctive bit of architecture. That's going to make that stand out really be recognizable now. This edge now. Yep. Now, I also have to start thinking about this might even cast a shadow up here, too. So we always have to be thinking about where maybe a shadow might be cast. You know, it's not so much there. Again, sort of a stipple type of effect here. Now, part of that is I want to also cover up uh, a bit of the... Again, there's a lot of the striations, right? It, it's an FDM printed piece. You're going to have those striations. Well, unless, I guess you can set them to like super high res or something like that and have the print take a long, long, long time and not get the striations. I, I don't know. I've never actually, I have an FDM printer, believe it or not, sitting in the basement. There's no place to set it up. And of course, the priority has been the resin printing so I, I don't know if that's ever going to get set up maybe one of these days of course it's an old ender 3 uh, who knows how long it might even be viable I don't know I'm going to cast some of my orange light down out here down the sides and we can certainly go lighter in there Where's our swell? Ah, there he is. So you can see we can still go much lighter with our object source lighting like we did here on our Witch King. Ah, that's good, Landrest. I'm glad to know because I was thinking like, oh, you know, is there going to come a time where you just can't get uh, spools for it anymore? I can only imagine what kind of uh, what kind of tricksy things will be involved in trying to get that that thing set up and working. <laughs> I can only imagine at this point. So again, kind of artificially putting in some extra texture here with this, just to hide those uh, lines. Now we do have a whole bunch of actually we did do a. Uh, 
Wait a minute, let me see. Where's my Easterlings? Uh, no, actually, that's uh, that's further up here. Let me see if I can find the terrain that I painted. I actually did do a couple of videos painting these things. They're part of the uh, Patreon page. There are actually some fountains, too, that we did. Where is my... There it is. So that that's all also our, our imprintable terrain right there. So all of those pieces. And... Now, those were all done, as you can see, with the acrylics there. That's from one of the videos that I did. But ever since then, I used up so much of my acrylic paints on that. I thought, you know, the oils are going to be so much better for doing that same sort of thing. Well, there we go. There's my scene again. Yeah, I know uh, it's in all in pieces right now. Yeah, right now it's just in a whole bunch of pieces. I don't even know which piece is which at this point. I mean, I know they're all still here. They haven't gone anywhere, but... I think I had almost started to try and watch a couple of uh, setup videos on those, but gosh, that was well over a year ago. Uh, see, that's starting to get uh, starting to get glowy here. Now, yeah, I don't know which which one this is. I have no idea. Again, it it was taken out of the shipping box, and that was that's how far we got with it. There was just uh, then there was some craziness that happened, and we never never ended up using that. So again, doing a little bit with the stippling here. Let's see if we can't maybe lighten up a little bit of the stonework there. Doing doing all of our, our stippling stuff here. Uh, this is darn near at the pin line wash as far as how thick or thin this is. That is extremely thin down. It's a practically uh, almost like a watercolor at this stage. We'll let that mix and blend here. Now we'll come back in with our some darker colors to figure out what sort of a pattern we want on this. Uh, FDM is very time consuming until you get it. That's uh, definitely what I've heard about it. And of course, that's something where it's going to, you know, the bigger terrain pieces that I'm going to want to do, well, those could be what, 48, 70 hour prints or something like that. So that's probably something that I would say for over the winter time where we don't have to worry about sudden interruptions in power and that sort of stuff. Uh, thank you so much, Armored Wolf, for posting the link to the Patreon page. Uh, I actually have several tu terrain tutorials on the Patreon page, probably a good couple of dozen, because, well, love me some terrain. I know there was five of them just in the original painting pyramid. And we've only added to those since. So again, that's some of our fluorescent red with some of the orange, a little bit of the fanchion red too. And then we're going to darken these down before we get too far into everything else here. Let's darken those down. That's going to give us quite a bit of contrast that you don't really necessarily see right now. I'm also going to use a little bit of the, ooh, perlene black. So some green in this too. And look at the difference this is going to make. See that edge gets nice and crisp there. We don't want to just completely blast any sort of mid-tones away from there.
Uh, I'm gonna have to get a little liquid on that just because that probably needs to, yeah. Yeah, the darker that gets, the more separation that we get with everything else. Uh, also, too, this is super, wow, uh, if you thought the other resin was absorbent, this is massively absorbent, which was another reason why sometimes the acrylics just, oof, it was it was a pain. It was not easy trying to paint these with the acrylics, so I thought, you know what, I bet you the oils would be a lot easier, and they sure were. Now, let's see, I think I've got a go oh, of the, the two fountain videos those are actually on the youtube channel so just james wapple youtube and of course another little reminder that we do actually have some we have some painted miniatures up on ebay they were just stuff that we did during the course of a couple of virtual reprocon events uh, basically you have single piece metal figures very much D and D type stuff. I think I'm going to now before we get too heavy into the lighter. So I'm gonna try and get the. Yeah, I think we need actually need to go thicker as well. But this little part of our architecture here, I think I'm gonna. See, what do we want here with this pattern? I have no idea. We'll just kind of figure it out as we go here. Going to utilize our liner brush here. You can see we're not doing this, right? No death grip on the front of the brush or anything. We keep our hands way back here, a nice relaxed grip on that brush. And you can see, oh, look, we're already starting to uh, see much more of a pattern emerge here. It was pretty soft. There wasn't really much to work with. There was kind of like a minor hint of some texture there, but that's it. And I think it's just kind of a diamond inside of a diamond... No, actually, it's something like this here. So they did something like this. And then something like that. Then this. And then that. So, okay, yeah. Real simple, nothing complicated. So thank you, Armored Wolf, for posting the links there to the eBay auctions. Again, it's nothing super spec, none, you know, nothing super tremendous, but again, some figures that we painted on the channel here. And while well, you can <clears throat> go check out the, uh, the sessions and then you would have the miniature in your possession. I'll tighten up these two. And then we'll have to put some of our cracks in there as well. This is going to have to be, <clears throat> sorry, darkened down here. But I think I'm going to use more of the, like the asphaltum and the Egyptian violet here. Right along this. Right there, Ooh, that really does get a nice separation there between our uh, the object source lighting and our shadow area here. Same thing on this side. Boy, that again, having painted this stuff with the acrylics and knowing just how difficult it would have been to do that, wow, that is just spectacular. Okay, I'm going to go back over here. Maybe not quite the lightest orange, but I think I need still some orange down here. Yeah, that needs to be filled in a little more. This actually needs to have a, a bit more lighting to it. Uh, 
let that orange extend out a little more. But you can see this stuff doesn't look so shiny anymore, does it? It's just when you get a little more of the thinner in there, well, it'll initially look a bit more shiny. Now I'm going to come back into this with a few more of my lighter. You know, and then we'll have to come back in with some of the darker stuff over the top once I get the lightest of the lights in here. I also need, I need to have this look like there's a glow here. So here, let's make that lighter too. Again, kind of stippling that. I don't know if you, yeah, it looks like you can. I wasn't sure if you could see this, but it looks like you can. There's a little bit of our lead orange now on the inside of the doorway. Inside of the forge here. And it's more of our that's like the fluorescent yellow here. Maybe a smidge more of the orange. See if I can hit the side of this. Yeah. I would, I was, that's why I was a little reluctant to do this. I wasn't sure what might show up on camera or not, but it seems like it's, you can actually see what's going on here. Better than I was expecting. I'm going to get more of my uh, light reflections here inside the Svatten. Where's our little, there's one of these little guys right here, too. I'm thinking that I would actually fill that up with some rocks and texture paste or whatever before I actually uh, paint that. So that's why I'm setting that aside for right now. All right, now I'm gonna see if I can't get the lightest of the light on here. Where's my brush? Down in here, which means some brilliant yellow pale and then also some of our fluorescent yellow. There we go. And this will have to be thicker, so I can't put too much thinner in it because I do believe, yeah, this stuff is pretty thin to get to begin with. Ah, see, just like, just like the fiery glow on our Witch King. Now that we're getting this lightest light in here, it really starts to have a glow. And then we're going to hit it with some darker stuff too, so... This will get well even more light. It's, it's so funny. This looks like a topographical map here. You can't really see it on camera, but there's all the the striations, right, from being an FDM print. That's hilarious. Let's see if I can't just bring a little bit of that back into the furnace there. Ooh, let's uh, get a little bit more of that over here, too. Maybe some down in here. And then last little bit, I think over here on this side, too. Might be just enough. And then I'm going to see what happens if I throw some darks over the top of this. I don't know. Let's maybe use up our, our beat-up brush for that. Something like this here. That's got some of our finch and red in it. 
Uh, again, just a little bit of a dry brush over the top of some of the raised surfaces here. Even a little bit more of the S full term into the fanchion red. Again, the I think the darker that is, once again, the more the lighter our lights are going to get. And then maybe a little bit of that along the edge here. Oh, I don't want to completely wipe out any type of glow along this, but I want it to be a little bit darker than what's you know right next to all of the uh, molten metal there. Again, I almost said lava, not lava, it's metal. Uh, oh, Hellburn, how are you doing? Hellburn Aussie, welcome in. So it's, we've been focusing a lot on our object source lighting. So let's see, how long have we been? So in four hours, we painted our Witch King here from start to finish with his object source lighting. We've also been working on our, uh, let's see, this is the Betrayer right here. And then since we already had all of our fluorescent oil paint out over here, he just said, oh, well, let's uh, paint up this uh, Dwarven terrain piece because we need it for all of our Moria stuff. I mean, we have a whole, not just our Moria Fellowship here, but we've got our Kazadoom army of dwarves with the same sort of lighting. And then, of course, where's the rest of our Moria army here? So our Moria dragon. And all of this stuff was painted on stream, by the way, so you can go back and check all that out. Now, here's some of the other terrain stuff that we've done. So we made a larger version of this building, right? That's using the stonework stuff from Green Stuff World. And, of course, we've been building lots of Rohan stuff here, like the Watchtower, the Windmill, the Archery Range. Now, uh, Hellborn, uh, now, I don't know if you had a chance to see, though, well, this is also used in our homemade fluorescence. This was the fluorescent magenta. I think we painted this about mm, three weeks ago-ish, something like that. So, Hellborn, thank you so much. Now, uh, yeah, I've, I've got to get uh, some of this stuff going, right, so that I can get those dwarves and the, the gobos and drakes and balrog fighting each other out on the table. So how have you been doing? Uh, see, now that this stuff is set, look at what we're doing. We're kind of taking this darker, so I almost do a little bit of a dry brush over the top of this. And see, it's done. Uh, it's not looking quite so, uh, not looking quite so shiny anymore. So yeah, we're starting to, yeah, just taking the same stuff that we're using here. And we're basically just doing a little bit of our dry brushy stuff over the top of this, toning some things down here and there. Now I will need to get some some uh, lighter reflected light here onto the facade of the furnace. Let's see if we can do that. It's kind of what's left of our light orange fluorescence there. And of course, well, we've been having a lot of fun with the 2D land. I think you've seen some of the 2D stuff, right, that uh, we've been doing on the channel here. It's kind of nifty because it does show a lot of the things that we're trying to do here in miniature form, but easier to see. hit this too. Again, it's going to be broken. Why? Because well, we want that to be stone texture, don't we? Ah, see that? Sort of changes this all around, but we had to be patient. We could not be hasty little hobbitses. Don't be hasty. Of course, Treebeard doesn't want to have anything to do with this forge right here. He doesn't even, he doesn't even want to come out on camera. He's a little bit afraid of all this fire. Turn this upside down, see if I can't 
do the same thing. And again, it's going to be a broken line here. The more we do all this, the more we hide, right? All of the 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 typical lines that are going to be on this, those striations. Now this, let's see, which way do we need to go with it? Okay, this side needs our lighter color. And I think we could still maybe uh, get away with going a little bit lighter on some of this here, at least on this uh, carved design. Well, let's get, we need a light on this side of it here and then there. Well, the G was down here. Okay, let's put that on the wrong side. We need this facing down to where the flame light source is. Need to do that here. Oh, you know what? I'll do that on this bottom edge too. It's all facing down towards where the fire stuff is, so better do that. And if you want to see another example of object source lighting on a terrain like piece like this, uh, it is on the YouTube channel as well. That was the the Herdstone. That was the GW Herdstone. That was really fun. The oils made short work of that. And that was kind of where I started to put two and two together and say, gee whiz, why in the heck have I not been painting all my terrain with the oils? So when we painted these, and you can go check these two out, both of those are painted with oil paints. I think, where's the a little closer build? There it is, a closer version of it there. So that was all painted with the oils. That's what it looked like before the paint. So yeah, go check that out. Ah, uh, so Grim is going to go uh, chase the dog and walk the squirrels as Sarge takes control of the Grim household. Again, we're not just putting their, our line there, but it's, it's broken in places. Got to do that. We'll do the same out here. I guess we need some along the edge this way. To lighten this up too. So this is just our green stuff world. The powders here. Mix in some linseed oil. In some cases a little bit of our thinner and poof we get homemade fluorescent oil paints and the nifty thing is that they are very opaque which no other fluorescent paints are not acrylic not oils even sometimes a benefit to making your own stuff can't lighten that up and now I could start to do that all the way further beyond just that that line there and again all that's going to do is going to really hide some of the typical FDM striations now uh, so actually Andrew asked uh, can you you know what kind of insane setting do you need to put this stuff on to try and hide that that stuff because I would imagine you gotta, it's gonna be like a 60 hour print or something like that. And take up a whole lot of uh, your spool to, to try and print out something like this without it actually having all of that striation on it. I thought so. I just wonder when, uh, now of course you can see see the honeycombs in here. Uh, I don't think that's something that uh, you can do with any resin printer right now, is that honeycomb structure on the inside. Because I guess that's, that is the advantage of this stuff, right, is you've got that honeycomb 
on the inside and it sort of gives it the strength but it doesn't take up all the resin I mean again I I am no authority on the FDM stuff <laughs> not sure I really want to be oh my gosh dealing with one type of printer might just be the limit of what my brain can handle at least at any one time so just like we did before letting a little bit of our liquid get into this here and yeah, you know, look at how this is it's not shiny anymore right uh, because the it's not dry but the liquid has set and the oils have set just a bit too yeah you know, we'll lighten this up just a bit we'll take some of that and just go to start spreading that around here again a stippling texture why because uh, the impossible to get rid of texture it's impossible to get rid of it but we're going to do a little bit of Moskorovka and try and hide that a, a little bit of Moskorovka here and there I mean, yeah you could do that with the acrylics but here well guess what it's blending with all of our original colors there that ain't going to happen with the acrylics no siree so here we got a little bit of a reddish orange not a radish and I don't know what have we been at this here I don't know, not even an hour maybe 45 minutes tops painting this and this, this has some you know fairly complicated stuff going on so just think about the rest of the terrain that will only have a little hint of the object source lighting like this instead of the full-on direct object source lighting uh, the opinion that the texture FDM printers give is an advantageous to terrain printing Yeah, Land well, you've seen some of the really nifty elven terrain pieces that are out there, right? That just like really looking like tree houses. It's very much Rivendell slash Lothlorien inspired. Those would be really tremendous to be able to print out. Now, if I remember right, those uh, actually. I, was it the FDM printers that are more, shall we say, prone to weather and uh, or climate conditions, even more so than the resin stuff? Or is it the other way around? I can never remember. I think it was the FDM stuff that doesn't get quite as messed up by, well, cold and extreme heat and such. Or it might be the other way around. I could be thinking about that backwards. It's been long enough since we last talked about it that I don't remember. Given that I, these days I have the memory capacity of a duck, that maybe wasn't so long ago that we talked about it. I also get the, you know, there's a, we're going to need a lighter line here to show the, uh, some of the big old cracks in this, but I want to finish doing this stuff first. Ah, so they prefer a warmer room. Well, okay, that. So we print terrain over the summer. Then, <laughs> I guess that's uh, that's when all the big terrain printing will happen. Is in the summertime when there's no problem having heat down in the basement. Once again, trying to catch a little bit of the. Reflect it. Well, let's get this edge here too. Got some of our lovely orange in there. We can darken some of that down even more, but 
first I think I want to hit the side of this with some of our orange again and that's like that reddish deep reddish orange there Ah, uh, Michael, I'm just imagining, well, good grief, uh, up there, I can only imagine uh, what that would be like. And then, of course, here, in the infamous June, where the humidity was so bad that doors wouldn't close anymore. Yeah, you actually, you couldn't close door. They were actually expanding that much. Uh, specifically so the miniature stays stuck to the build plate. Okay. So I get more of the stone texture in here that's not actually there. I mean, all the stuff that I'm putting on here, that's not there. Or if it is, it's mostly covered up by all of the uh, striations and such. So we're going to... Go with a little bit bigger brush here to do some of this. So that we can make that happen a little bit uh, faster. I mean, I don't know, this is pretty darn fast. Although, uh, I know Landress, you were saying that something like this, if I get the Proxon going, should be able to make something like this relatively fast, right? Just out of the foam. Again, I just tend to need more terrain pieces than the average person, so... Or, you know, the next 10 average persons. So maybe, for me, just trying to construct it myself is almost better. So yeah, that is uh that's gotta be a bit of a challenge right there, trying to keep any printer going. I just I yeah. That is quite the challenge. Okay, where is another one of our blending brushes? You're gonna try and get the paint out of this. If I can. We need to nope. We didn't, I guess we didn't get enough out of there. Thought we had. Let's do the little more cleaning on this here. I think now we've got some of that out of there. A little bit of a brilliant yellow pale here. Yeah, I've got to really hit the sides of this with something lighter. And maybe even a little bit of the Indian yellow in there too. Ah, there we go. The, the interior of the forge wasn't looking as brightly lit as the exterior of the forge. Hey, Grey Wolf Studio, how you doing? Uh, so Grey Wolf, this was our first... Uh, I knew I wanted to paint this, and the thing that I wanted to be painting, well, that didn't print successfully. So we had this, and I thought, well, we got object source lighting we can do. We need Moria stuff too, don't we? We need to have our Moria terrain ready to go now. So, Grey Wolf, nice to see you back. I hope that you had yourself a decent day today. Uh, scary to think now, it's only about an hour and a half till it's Sunday. At least here in the central time zone. I'm going to try and hit this again with some of my lighter stuff. Maybe a bit more of the brilliant yellow pale down here. Again with the Trying to simulate some stone texture here. Lots of stippling, of course. Yeah, we need it for... And I've got tons of uh, 
I thought it was just a few scattered terrain pieces. No, there's a significant amount of Moria terrain. Now, I do actually have to build essentially the floor of it and maybe uh, either some walls or do a painting, like a backdrop style painting, one or the other. But we actually have a fair amount of, well, we have intact columns and pillars, but we also have, you know, things like this piece right here. We have a lot of those. Here's another broken piece right there. So we have a lot of those. And then we have, uh, well, things like this here, the throne and a little uh, crypt over here. So... And, well, with Lord of the Rings, it is only a 4x4 four four board, so it takes up less, it doesn't take as much terrain to get that covered. Oh yeah, here we really need to hit some of that with our, some of our lighter color there. Maybe even here a bit, where we have some of the Molten metal coming right up to the edge here. We might just lighten that a smidge, maybe not that much. We have a, a, again, another brush here that we can use to blend stuff with. Ah, you set up a bookcase in the studio and a whole lot of Song of Ice and Fire stuff. Gee whiz, uh, now what were some of the, what are some of these song factions that you've got uh, going on over there? I might try to do some, oh, well, the winter is coming. That's right. That's another thing we could do in December as well. We got plenty of Song of Ice and Fire stuff that we can do. Seriously, we got a lot of it that we can do. So yeah, very successfully, I think, hiding some of the nasty striation lines that you would ordinarily be seeing here. Lighten that up just a little bit there. And now on the outside here, we've got our, well, <laughs> uh, we'll use, I think, some of our uh, blue on this. So we'll just hit this really quick here. Now we'll come back and sharpen up some of these edges, but I just want to get a little something on here. It can't all just be that straight up dark tone. But now as we do this, you can really start to see some of the uh, striation lines in here. Ah, so Grey Wolf's got some uh, Baratheons and some Night Watch. Well, we do have... Uh... Oh, what was it that I called these guys? Oh, yeah, Resurrection Queens. That's right. Yeah, that's what we that's what we always call these guys. And I actually have a couple of units of the Night's Watch that are all actually prepped and based and primed and pretty much ready to paint right now. So don't be surprised if... Uh, if there comes a time where things are a little bit crazy and busy, I just break those out and use those since they're all prepped and ready to go. And, uh, you know, what? I'll let the, yeah, right here on this side. So a gray wolf uh, painting the, the terrain and the oils. I knew it would be easier. I just didn't realize it would be this easy doing this with the oil. This is uh, this almost feels like steel in here. How easy it makes painting the terrain. I just I can't get over this. And we're gonna want a little bit of a secondary glow on the outside of our terrain or not anywhere near as much or as intense as what we got going on here but something uh, well we did them in black uh, the those riders over there yeah we painted those with black of course uh, not black black right 
So yeah, um, those were uh, those were done in black. Now, of course, the those other ones that I had to paint, the, the commission ones. Uh, gosh, what I had, oh, I had to basically almost paint them up like Rangers of the of Lord of the Rings with all the greens and browns and stuff. But yeah, those guys were uh, basically black, and even so were these guys. Yeah. So were these guys. Now, of course, the acrylic black is nowhere near like the uh, <laughs> like the black that we're used to with the oil paints, is it? So, yeah, actually, uh, Grey Wolf, that should be interesting to see the Song of Ice and Fire stuff painted with the oils. Well, especially anything that needs black, right? Because just how intensely dark. And that was, uh, I don't even know if I had the black spinel when I painted the uh, that Wapelius there. May not even have the black spinel at the time. I think we were just using the indigo and the Van Dyke brown. So again, just a, a, a hint, slight hint of our orange and a couple of those other places. Ah, uh, gray with the. This stuff, having painted several pieces of this with the acrylics, and it was an absolute, it was very difficult, we'll put it that way. Doing this is so easy. I knew it would be easier, but this is like insane level easy. This is so much, even like here. So now I can soften up that texture even more. Wow, that really is amazing to see the difference. Okay, I'm gonna try and get some of the uh, cracks on this here if I can. You know, let's get some of our lighter stuff going. Boy, for a second, I almost thought I put out too much of the fluorescent stuff and now I'm realizing, nope, we're we're using up a decent amount of it here on our terrain piece. Okay, now let's see if we can get some of these uh, cracks painted in here. Just like uh, what we've been doing there. And we need to also lighten a few parts of that a little more. But let's uh, see if we can also do the cracks on our walls here. Because what was interesting uh, with the acrylics to make it flow, you've got to really water it down, and then it would just flow like a crazy pin line wash into all of the, uh, the striations. Here with the oils, you don't need the liquid to make the paint flow so much, which means we don't have that sort of pin line wash effect. Which is, it's interesting that you have to do, use the oil paints to not have the oil paint effect of a pin line wash. I find that amusing. Oh, yeah, that's got to go on this side. And then again, we've got the crack over here. We got to make sure we're doing this on the upper side, right? Because the light's coming from below. And now we're going to try and make these extra white colors here. Then I might actually have to go back and do a little bit with some of the darker stuff here because that got a little wonky in some places. And again, where the more of the object source lighting is cast in there, our light on it. Make those a little brighter. And I think I'll probably come back in. Asphaltum here. I don't maybe a little Van Dyke brown. Let's see if we can make some of this even. Darker. I don't want to make it look now that's going to be looking too much like it's a lava there so it's back to the fanchion red so 
So I think that slightly, maybe not even that dark. Okay, yeah, now we just got a little bit more of the finch and red in it. It really, I mean, it just looks like one of those typical uh, relief maps, right? One of those topographical ones with all the different lines indicating the heights of uh, elevations. I'll maybe darken down on the, the outside is just a smidge. I'll come back with this uh, blue here and see if we can't lighten up the sides of this a little. Oh yeah, these things too. Gotta do that on the other side. Oh uh, yeah, uh, Grey Wolf. That was, where's our series 24 here? So there we go. That was actually that was series series 24, not as long ago as I thought, but that was our first uh, experiment with doing a, oh gosh, more of a multi-basing as opposed to just the individual movement trays. So yeah, that was uh, another one of our Patreon series there. That was a very different basing uh, episode, let me tell you. That was probably one of the more complicated basing episodes. And then, of course, plenty of object source lighting when it came to the actual painting of them, too. Here, let's hit this uh, with the same lighter tone. Yeah, just using one of these filbert brushes, so yeah, I can see we've got a little, little something happening there. We'll start to bring some of that out here. Want to make sure there's some, uh, some bluishness to that. Want to make sure that's a cooler color out there. Of course, uh, we are going to be coming back in with some of our darks, like we did around here. Yeah, I don't want to do too much of this here because the more of that I do, it's going to reveal that much more of the striations and such. So let's uh, not go too crazy with making this lighter here. More over here. And then, like I said, we're going to darken some of that down. We've got one of our blending brushes here we can just get some of the indigo into that some of our spinel and start to darken some of this down along this edge it's uh, very much like what we did here on either side of our lighting effects Uh, probably keep my separate, uh, oh yeah, thanks, Grey Wolf. Now, I think there's extra guys in that set because, wait a minute, where, is this the one here? No, that's not, that's not her. Uh, wait a minute, this is it, right? Uh, yeah, is this, this is part of that Raylor Faithful set. I haven't actually painted that one yet, so we'll have to, uh, We'll paint that one maybe, oh, for Shadow and Flame. Maybe we'll paint that one uh, in November. Try and find some things that are shadowy and flamey. Uh, actually, I was thinking of, what is it, the Skin Changers or something like that? I thought that could be a, also a December type of a thing. Because I know I have those somewhere. I mean, they're just critters, right? We could probably do some really fun snow and ice techniques if I have the bases painted beforehand. We could maybe do some snow and ice as part of a uh, part of the Twitch session. Uh, so, okay, that is the that's the thirteenth mini. 
I know some of them have, uh, it's weird, some of them have only 12, and then there's some that have almost 14. So here, now we're starting to use this as just a blending brush because uh, also too, well, the FDM, as, as I expected, is really absorbent. What makes it a nightmare to work in acrylics it makes it so easy to work with in oils because again this would have been super uh, that this paint would have really been piled on here by comparison if that was just a regular old miniature so really cool uh, and we have actually a fair amount of fdm style terrain pieces like this to paint i've got some osgiliath stuff i have actually some intact stuff that we'll be using as a more like Minas Tirith, maybe not Dull Amroth. I would like to do my own Dull Amroth terrain. Now, actually, uh, Art of Michael, I think it's Monster Mini Mayhem. They did a whole winter set of sculpts, and that was uh, that was something else I was thinking of doing, painting lots of icy things. And... Uh, that was, of course, when I only just started to do the Patreon stuff. So just like all the Halloween stuff that came out. Now, Art of Michael, uh, I don't know, have you seen anything from, say, you know, Loot Studios, Titan, Forge, Archvillain? Have you seen any sneak peeks as to what they're doing in November or December? I haven't actually had a chance to see that yet. I'm sure that... Uh, they must have put out some kind of previews, but I haven't seen them. Ah, here we go. Now that that paint has had a chance to set here for a while, sure enough, we can start spreading this around and make this a little bit lighter. Yeah, because I, I was thinking this October, I thought, why in the world did I not have any of these really cool Halloween, like the, the vampire count stuff that Archvillain did? I said, why didn't I have this stuff before? And I realized I wasn't subscribing to those things in October. So yeah, Art of Michael, I can only imagine all the really cool winter themes that all the 3D printing folks will be coming out with. So I think we'll have lots of really appropriate stuff. Again, trying to get some lighting on the underside of this that is also going to be toned down a little bit and it also take away some of the that that line got really thick there uh, same thing up here so we can just take some of that paint away Uh, same over here, where, again, some of that stuff got a little bit thicker. Just move that stuff around. Uh, Stark Attachments has a Winterfell Guardian. Uh, yeah, boy, I'm trying to think what's the newest stuff that I have. It's pretty old. I'm, I am way, way, way far behind on the uh, Song of Ice and Fire stuff. They stopped, they stopped sending things a long time ago, so I'll just do what I have anyways, I guess. I think that, like, the those Rose Knights and the Kingsmen, Queensmen, that was pretty much the last of the new stuff that they sent. Hey, Riot Sister. How you doing? Yeah, I didn't don't have any of the uh, the Valhalla stuff because that wasn't part of their uh, P well not Patreon but their their regular stuff. So I don't have any of that. But now we have actually some great grimoire figures and uh, well we have the clay cyanide stuff so. I'm sure we'll be able to find some pretty nifty, pretty nifty stuff there too. Hey, Laughing Goblin Studio and Riot Sister, 
Welcome to both of you. Uh, let's see. Well, we're, where's our... Here's a oh, look at this. He actually does look kind of... Uh, ah, yeah, that, that's going to really go well. You know, especially, again, trying to get a little bit of the, the lighting on the outside of it, too. But, yeah, this is the first of our Moria terrain pieces. We have many more to go. There's a lot more Moria terrain pieces after that. Where's the... Uh, here it is. So we were already painting the Witch King here with the flaming sword. So we thought, well, here, let's uh, let's paint this too, because, you know, reasons. So Laughing Goblin, I hope that you're doing well. And I don't know if you have seen the... This is our latest landscape of Middle Earth right here. We had a blast with him. And I think, oh, before that, the week before that was our Minas Morgul. Oh, thanks, Laughing Goblin. Uh, let's see, another box at Oh, and Lannister, Red Cloak, and Stormcrow. So, yeah, uh, Grey Wolf. Gosh, the last Lannister thing that I had show up here was... Wow, I'm trying to even think. Uh, oh, it was the... Uh, no, the Mummers, that's not, that's not Lannister's. It was... Gosh, I can't remember what the heck they were. They were the almost like Empire Flagellants. It was almost more like that. I forget what the heck they were, the Penitent guys or whatever. I think that was the last of the new stuff that I saw here as far as Lannisters go. Like I said, we are, we are way behind the, the curve on the Song of Ice and Fire stuff. I could actually, I could still go a smidge lighter on some of these uh, areas here. We haven't, there's no white in there, so. Uh, oh, yeah, well, the, is there new flayed men? Because I have the old original ones. We've painted those a bunch of times. I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't know that they came out with new ones. Uh, we've got the zebra guys for the Targaryens. So we have, you know, all of the kind of the original horses with the screamers, I think they were called. Now, we did a bunch of the unsullied. Yeah, I'm, I'm way... I, again, I've never, having read the books or seen the shows, it's even harder for me. To not only not know what the miniatures they've done, but also not to know what the heck they are. That's a bit of a disadvantage. Yeah, so Laughing Godbud Studios, this is uh this is for our Moria army right here. We've got uh there's a nice little thing here for the uh for your metal there. And we've got uh crypt. So these are all things that were printed up by our imprintable terrain. A little bit of a throne right here for Moria and that's going to be really handy for here it's got uh, we have tons and tons of dwarf figures and of course we have our Moria army for uh, with our gabos and our dragons and cave drakes right oh actually here let's grab uh, let's grab our dweller in the dark oh there we go yeah that's gonna. That's very fun. Can't wait to take a picture again. Get these pieces painted up and start snapping some pictures and then playing some games. Of course. I'm gonna try and make this even a little bit lighter here. Again, right along that edge. Here, let's put a little bit of it along the edge of this now. Uh, the paint here, it's not dry, but it is set much more. It makes that a whole lot easier to do. Uh, yeah, Grey Wolf, it's kind of interesting. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that would have worked very well for Lord of the Rings, but the scale was way too far off. It was gigantic by comparison. Uh, actually, all of the... Well, not all of the uh, 
ones that I did as far as the commission stuff, they weren't all just for Song of Ice and Fire. No, one per he was he's using them for his own his own world that he made. He's not not using them for Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, the one thing I wish I did have was was that the dragon set. Boy, can I even find those? Well, here's uh, there's some of the Dothraki that we did, and of course there's the Unsullied. Oh, there's the dragons. It would be nice to have those, because uh, those those were kind of neat to paint right there. All right, I'm gonna see if I can either get some more lights on the. Exterior pieces here, or uh, I'm going to take a little bit more of the thinner into this, uh, get a little bit of the indigo in there, make sure it's got enough blue in it. Because we're trying to match, where's our, where's one of our little cave trolls right here? So again, that's a, that's one of our Moria trolls between the, the forges, right, and the well, your Balrog. We need to have some flamey stuff. Let's just get a little bit of our separation here from some of these surfaces. We'll come back and we'll add some more dark over there, of course. Boy, this is made so much easier with the oils. This would be just a massive struggle with the acrylics. Uh, yeah, actually, Grey Wolf, uh, I st uh, a few of us have printed out some stuff now from, I think it's Kurzluk, that's the name of it. That's another Lord of the Rings theme. And actually, the, the Witch King that we painted today, or tonight anyways, that is from, that's from Diwali. And that was uh, the really nice, uh, oh, actually, I'm going to try and print out later tonight, at least hopefully, some of their... They're brand new Warg Marauders. So that's the Wargs with the three goblins on the back of them. And that uh, Kurluk, they, their November set is going to be Far Harad. So Oliphants, uh, Camel Riders, Mahout. So that's going to be fantastic. Here, let's get some of my uh, Van Dyke Brown into this as well. Get a little dab. So Grey Wolf, just like with the Wapelius Spellbrush figure, we're really getting the chance to see just how deep and rich the darks are that the oils can do for you here. This is just unbelievable. And look at look at the difference we're already getting here. And that just a a very simple dry brush. But look at how we can push this stuff around. Really amazing. Uh, that's some of the Van Dyke Brown, some of the Black Spinel. Again, just a, essentially a dry brush here. Nice and easy, right? Uh, the printing goes ever on. The nice thing about that is that he tries to have more like neutral stuff and he has a ton of critters you know he's got eagles tree men uh he has a kind of a little different take on some things also uh like king theoden he has king theoden on his throne and he also has you know eowyn but not just as the warrior uh, you know or the princess where he's got all kinds of really fun different things and he's got lots of terrain as well and now he's doing just objects so sort of like how loot studios does those objects well he's done a blacksmith he's done a lot of basically kind of horse uh, outfit equipment right so lots of very helpful stuff even that has nothing to do with lord of the rings Yeah, let's get sneak in some of our 
dark over here. Again, it makes it so incredibly easy. Let's take a little bit of more darker right on the edge of this because it makes that brighter without having to add too much lighter color. Ah, Ibnizen, how you doing? Well, Ibnizen, uh, we've been painting terrain with the oils for a little while now on the stream. This is the first FDM printed piece that I've done. You can kind of see that the honeycomb and the striations and stuff, but it really does make it a lot easier. I mean, this is only taken, I don't know, maybe an hour plus on this thing, max. And Abernizen, uh, we also painted the Witch King here on horseback. So what is this? Uh, five hours, five minutes, both of these things painted from nothing, including uh, we also were working on the, uh, not the Tainted here, sorry. We actually were painting on the Tainted. That was this one here. And then this is the Betrayer. But using our homemade fluorescence on this. Oh, Ibn is in, uh, so USA Art Supply. I don't know if you can get that there in, in Germany, but uh, that's where we got the interference powders. But if you want to get fluorescent powders, like the Green Stuff World ones, uh, you can get them, well, obviously, uh, much more inexpensively. To, to say the least. Let's see if I can't just hold this in a different spot so that I can get my target though. There we go. Let me see if I can, whoops. Sharpen up some of these edges here with some of our darks again. We came in here with the lighter stuff. Now it's time to come back in with some darks. So even as I hope that you're having a good Sunday morning there. I know it's on the early side. Yeah, that's better. Uh, well, it's uh, the oils really do help uh, help with the production levels, no doubt, because all of this stuff here, it just it's so easy. There's not so don't have to really struggle, uh, especially with something like this to just apply the paint. Which with the acrylic, having painted a bunch of this stuff with the acrylics, it can be a bit of a struggle. Because with all the striations and everything, if you just try to dry brush it, all you're doing is just accentuating all of the striations. I'm going to try and just darken this thing down here. Oh, let's see. Oh, uh, having the dog out. I'm sure it's got to still be dark outside. Uh, what is it? So 10.57 here. So about 6.57 in the morning, I'm guessing, there. I will darken that, too. And then the, I mean, this is what makes it so spectacular. Just All I had to do was just do a bit of a quick blend right there. Now I'm going to, oh, here it is. I'm going to try and uh, maybe get some of the darks in some of our cracks here. I had to let some of that stuff set for a little bit. Now it's still 557. Uh, actually, I guess, ooh, it's going to get confusing because uh, daylight savings time has to be coming close here. I think it's early in November or something. Of course, that is fall back, so we actually do get an hour back. I wish that pretty much happened every single week. That that's uh, that is my position there. I would love that to happen basically every single week. We get an extra hour of sleep. 
might be a little bit confusing on other areas, but uh, the needs of the many sometimes are out need by the needs of the one. Here we'll uh, try and reinforce some of these uh, oh, chips and such taken out of our stone. Again, that's also going to mask the effect of the uh, striations and such from the printing process. Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry about that, Arta Michael. Uh, it's not going to be super, <laughs> it's really not going to be all that super helpful right here because it will just kind of uh, create some mischief and mayhem as we try and realize, you know, what time is it for some of the other folks that we work with who aren't also going to be changing their clocks at the same time that we are. Because I think it is down in Australia where those clocks don't get changed for quite a while yet. So again, trying to not just work on the cracks, but then some of these uh, here is here little divots taken out of the stone. Here, let's maybe uh, try and do something a little bit more with this crack right here. There's really nothing actually uh, sculpted there. I'm just doing that to, once again, uh, cover up that texture where we can. Uh, we were talking about it before. So we put our lighter color in here. Now we can maybe cut away some of it with the darker color, which is so much easier to get the thinner lines. Yeah, I think Indiana does that maybe because of where they're located. Being just right here at the, the edge of the central time zone. And I, I guess potentially Arizona also at the edge of another time zone. Yeah, I, I don't want to really darken that too much, but here, let's do a little bit there just again to sit right there. Let's do some more of these cracks now. Could do some of them here. Uh, see what that, that really starts to uh, make this look less just like, well, a printed piece of terrain and hopefully something that maybe is a little more substantial. But I'm still trying to decide, do we want to darken the edge of that anymore? Maybe not. And I think I've got that about as light as I can get. I would love to get some more light in the center of the furnace area. Well, we have our, one of our blending brushes here. I could maybe, oh yes, now that the paint has set back there a little bit, wow. That really covers much better than I expected it to back in here. I think, yeah, I think you can see that now. I don't know, maybe we could even do a little bit more of our lighter color here. Let's, uh, here, let's do a little bit thinner in that. Oh, geez, yeah. Wow, that, that's significantly lighter back there now. Hit the outside of this, too. Yeah, so... Uh, like I said, we what was it the herdstone, the beastman terrain piece? We've got sort of a shortened version of that on YouTube. I don't know. I might uh, might try to take this and make this into 
bit of a YouTube video as well, because it's been really fun working on this. I didn't expect to enjoy this one quite so much. Oh, let's see. Northwest Indiana, down by Evansville. Yeah, can you imagine? You know, they show up to work here in Chicago, and they keep having to change t time zones on their commute into work. Oof, that would be uh, that would be rough to say the least. So uh, again, here I'm gonna try and uh, lighten up this along the edges here. Just to sharpen this up. It's a little bit of our. That's the radiant blue. It's got some of the, well, I think it's actually got a little bit of Van Dyke brown that kind of accidentally got in there too. One really intentional, it just sort of happened. And I might also let that just get a little bit lighter here along the way. See, oh, uh, I guess now maybe we could do uh, some more lights on this part of our train. It maybe even some uh, some cracks on this side too. Whatever. Yeah, let's get the same stuff. And uh, like the ones we were doing over here. Yeah, maybe it's a little too much. And the same thing here, just putting in some of those cracks. We might have to get some of our uh, darker color into that as well, but uh, using for the interference colors. Uh, uh, so it is a Williamsburg paint. Now you can also just get the powder and mix it with the linseed oil, so that's iridescent pearl white. You can, well, like I said, you can get the, uh, the powder version of that. Uh, because I know I've done it. I, unfortunately, it's going to be really hard for me to find. Uh, oh no, that's my uh, interference red there. I thought I f thought I had it. It's going to be hard to find. Now it's interference blue. It's uh, somewhere in amongst all the stuff. Uh, and uh, USA Art Supply. That is where all of the interference powders came from. And now that. Uh, I, I realize, uh, and I just get them off of Amazon, I'm going to try and snag some of the fluorescent powders from them too. So don't be surprised if you see another video on mixing the fluorescent stuff because I want to give those uh, powders a try from USA Art Supply, see if they work just as well. Uh, Chapman has had a lot of success with those, so I thought, well, that could be another, again, another little possibility for some folks here that maybe don't want to deal with uh, ordering stuff all the way from Green Stuff World. Again, just to make some larger cracks here. And the oils, the other thing they do is because the darks are so dark, it makes painting terrain pieces like that that much easier. Because when I tried painting these with the acrylic, it, it seemed like no matter how dark I was trying to go, I was using black primer when I still had black primer. It still wasn't making these things dark, but the oils, oh my gosh. And we're not even using black with the oils. It's the indigo, mixing it with the Van Dyke brown. And even this that I'm doing here with the cracks and such, with the acrylics, that is really difficult. Because, again, the paint doesn't flow like this. Just like here, look at this. I could soften that down so easily with the acrylics would have been a big struggle. 
Oh, Dano, you were able to find some floral powders too. Uh, actually, Dano, it would be interesting to see, because I know uh, you were the, the the canary in the coal mine as far as it was uh, with the refined linseed oil. Is that what that was? Or the cooked linseed oil? And how that reacted with some of the fluorescent stuff? So hopefully maybe that uh, that stuff that you found will be a little less reliant on a certain type of uh, thinner. Or linseed oil, sorry, not thinner. Oh, well, nah, boy, I don't really want to make that too light there, but it kind of needs it. Now here, what about on this side? Let's see, if I try and put some cracks through this thing, all I'm going to do is just lose a lot of the resolution that. So I think we won't try and paint any cracks through there. But we are going to come back to our fluorescent orange. Wow, we really did use a lot of this. I I thought I put too much out here, but we're we are definitely going to use all of it. And now again, where this is settled, you can see I'm doing a little bit of the stippling stuff here. I'm also going to thin that down a bit. Yeah, there we go. And see how nicely that sticks? Again, this all, I don't know, maybe about an hour or so ago, we can go back again. Uh, like I said, I watch this here. You'll see just how shiny all this looked because it was very wet. It was a pre-glaze, essentially. I uh, went to the same as you. It seems to be working. Yeah, Dan, uh, just like uh, just like that print that I did last night was the serious test, because uh, I did the first one and everything seemed to be great. And I said, well, here, let's give it a real test with some larger stuff. Ooh, that didn't work out so well. So I'm I'm sure that print is done by now. What is it? Uh, yeah, it's eleven eleven here. I bet you any money that print is done. Oh, it's long since done. Not like I said. Even if all I get is the decent, the, the tree man stuff to be printed out successfully, I can almost live with the well. Uh, if the troll is not right. That's a big hunk of resin there that's uh, gone. Although the Soraya Simple is, what, about $7 cheaper than the Frozen. Uh, I don't know, what, uh, is that one of her Japanese brands there? Like all of those uh, pigment powders that she found that were all Japanese brand? I wonder if Steel is going to be streaming tonight. So now, again, expanding on some of these little cracks, right? Especially where we've got the glowy stuff. Maybe I don't want to do too many out here because, you know, you want that light to be a little less crazy there. Now, the, now did you change the size of it at all? I still... Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I'm just imagining things there. But after those uh, Black Newman Orients and how tiny they were, my goodness. I uh, just, uh, I guess I'm going to be a little bit more paranoid about that stuff from now on. Uh, the amount of UV fluorescent pigments are usually transparent. Uh, and actually, uh, Ibn Izzin, uh Chapman, he said that the stuff from USA Art Supply, it has, he said it has the same effect as these. It's that nice uh, opacity, right? Now, of course, uh, where's our old Marion Street fluorescent paints here? Let's see if we can take one of these out as much as I like these and they weren't terribly expensive because this giant 55 mil tube was only what 15 bucks or something the thing is these are super translucent 
Now, of course, you know, doing something like this, it requires a fair amount of our object source lighting, like our entire Moria terrain board. That uh, maybe we will go with the Marion streets there and save some of our our powder pigment versions for just regular small pieces of terrain like this. Again, now that's yeah, it's got too much yellow, and we're gonna tone that down with some of this orange here. Now I just left that as it is, just seeing how it turns out. Uh, Oh, geez, Dano is still using that red transparent resin. Uh, I know uh, uh, Kathy's podcast crew, he prints everything in some kind of green translucent resin. But, I mean, look at me. The, I mean, this is <laughs> practically, I mean, but I guess it depends on how thick the piece is because I've printed some stuff that is practically black. Let me see if I can get this stupid throne out here without breaking it. So yeah, that was pretty much solid. So that's what happens when you use the Soraya Simple Smoky Black and you have a piece that is solid that's that big. It's going to be dark. Uh, so again, taken, uh, that's our fluorescent red. Wee bit of the orange into that. I think oh, we need some lighter stuff on the top of that crack. And I'm just going to grab some of the yellow over here, some of the orange, see if that's enough. And it is. There we go. So since, uh, I don't know, how long have we been working on this? It's five and a half hours. I think we spent probably a good three hours or so on the Witch King and the other guys. So this might have been less than two hours, this entire thing, less than two hours. So I think we could actually make a, a YouTube uh, tutorial thing out of this. Again, going to lighten up the cracks a little bit on that side. A little bit on the upper end, end of this. All right, well, Abidu, you have a good night. And well, oh, here, uh, so Grey Wolf Studio uh, just provided you with a little bit of warm. Oh, look at that. Well, anytime the, the object source is part of the thing, it still does kind of show up as lighting. But boy, look at that, huh? Wow. That looks kind of neat there. Let's bring back our color. Man, oh man. And thank you so much, Mock1984. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. So this is cool. We can actually have our, our Gana. He's like, whew, hot stuff in there. Yeah. So that's, uh, there's our Gandalf, our Moria Gandalf, right next to, uh, next to our Moria piece here. I'm going to see if I can maybe get some of these brushes out of the way here maybe we'll put them let's put them over there in our jar look at this there we go all our brushes now put away in our jar oh greetings and salutations thanks so much for joining us here that's appreciated and we are doing this with oil paints right here using now, in this case, green stuff oil, fluorescent powders mixed with linseed oil to create some oil paints and then using them with the rest of our normal oils. Now, of course, we have to... Uh... So here's a, another example. This is a 3D printed Gandalf bust right... Oh, I got to use the... Uh... Got to use my black on that. And then here's uh... Uh, our dweller in the dark. Oh, that's going to be so much fun to be... Taking pictures next to this, and here's some more of the army. Here's our Moria dragon. That was actually a bones dragon, and some 3D printed bits. And then here's some more of our Moria army right there. All that stuff is painted on the channel here. So 
if you go back, uh, think of it like a YouTube channel. You can actually go back and watch past episodes. They're all saved as highlights. Okay, good. This is finally set enough that I can come back in here with my really, really, really intense light on some of this. Still have a smidge of our fluorescent yellow left. Ah, Bavaria. Now, I know that uh, well, most we're mostly Austrian. Now, apparently, the name Wappelitz it's a basically a defunct Austrian word for wilderness. Apparently, I guess that's uh, how that goes. But also some some German in the mix as well. But there's a tiny bit of French in the mix, which makes me think that, uh, you know, we're talking more like a Strasbourg or something like that, as far as maybe a location in Germany, which I guess also goes along with the Austrian, right? So you're talking more southwesterly. Uh, oh, yeah, that's, uh, we did... Uh, we have been doing some some of our dark angels. We'll be doing more of the dark angels uh, once I get the bikes assembled, for sure. Uh, now, if you have a an Instagram or something like that, you want to post uh, some pictures of your painted miniatures so that folks can see those. Now we're really starting to hit this with our bright. Right lights. I, I just had to let this stuff set, and it's setting faster on this. So what I'm learning is that this is every bit as absorbent as I thought it would be. I wasn't sure if the FDM material would be as absorbent as some of like the Soraya Smoky Black is, but it seems to be pretty darn absorbent. Once again, I'm gonna. Splash it with a bit more of my light in here. We have a, a lot of dark there. This is some of our lightest light. I think we can go even lighter. Yeah, this is going to be almost straight up brilliant yellow pale here. Uh, I think we also have to go thicker with this. And look, look we're holding the brush literally on the end with just two fingers here. And yes, indeed, that is actually still a little bit brighter than what's already here, which is uh, very nice. I needed something just a hint lighter. Now, up here against the wall of this is another place where I'm going to try and put some of those layers that I get. Look at this two fingers on that brush, nowhere near the ferrule of the brush. How in the world could I do this if my hand was sitting there right on the ferrule of the brush? That would be impossible. Now I want to say we might also do something like that. Yeah, I think we'll do something like this here. Let's hit this part of it as well. Um, so this is our imprintable terrain. It's the same folks that did the uh, that big giant, well, all the big trolls that we did, and also, of course, Birdie and Jeeves here. It's like, woof, that's, that's quite warm. I'll warm myself by the fire here. And then uh, same folks that did Mr. Giggles. Where's Mr. Giggles? There he is. Why is he called Mr. Giggles? Because he's a very fun guy. Boom. Yeah, so we painted all these guys up on stream. And there's there's a link to our imprintable terrain and lots of, well, as you might imagine, fantastic terrain. I do believe there's some sci-fi stuff, uh, like Star Wars terrain too. So was it for Legion? If you need terrain for that, I do believe that our imprintable has uh, Legion terrain or Star Wars terrain, anyways. Uh, 
uh, and then the the fantastic sort of elven terrain again you know it's Lord of the Rings obviously but it could be used for anything there is no particular system that is designed for oh, yeah this really if I can I try to really chuck some of this very bright yellow in here if I can yeah that, that some more of it inside the furnace here not like anybody's gonna really be able to see in there it's more just to give it a little hint of something ah uh, yeah that's a uh, boy I remember when we were painting him and of course uh, let's see there was Rocky Woody Mr. Giggles now we still have to name our uh, undead zombie whatever uh, giant not sure what his name is yet he's he's well he's dry now I just haven't had a chance to put the basing materials on him uh, now again there's a uh, you know I got all the the honeycomb stuff in there uh, I don't well, I've never never done the FDM printing myself I I have an FDM printer but it is uh, definitely not in operation maybe one day we give that a try Yeah, well, he's, uh, we do not, I don't think we have it. No, we don't have any Georges. We don't have any Georgias either. May maybe this should be a little, light. not quite that, uh, not that light. Maybe this light here, right where this crack is. something about like that yeah there we go yeah we don't have uh, we certainly don't have a Bruce either birdie Jeeves and Bruce uh, I'm just looking at this here do I need to darken that maybe slightly ooh, ever so slightly here Average, yeah, just a little bit there. I think it needed that. And maybe on this side as well. Tighten up our line there. That works. Oh, and by the way, uh, I think we can get one more Armada Monday out uh, this month because if I can assemble that that last Twilight Kin ship. It's one of the bigger ones. It's got two masts since there's all the, the skelly friends and everything on the sails. That might be fun to do something like that. Okay, there we go. A couple of more of our crack, especially here. This is a, as good a place as any to do that so that they will show up that much more. Uh, this is the S. Fulton. I don't know, some of the Van Dyke Brown as well. And some of these cracks, maybe even a little bit smaller here, a little finer cracks. And that really starts to age this a lot. Now I think I'll do some of the darker cracks out here. We got some Van Dyke Brown, some Indigo. Let's do that along here. Uh, not gonna let too much of the lighter color get to these, but I, don't know, I might have a little more of our light source uh, going up this way, maybe, perhaps. Not sure just yet.
So maybe make a couple of more of our cracks out here. Let's go over to this side. I know we had a bunch more over here. So yeah, the uh, ye old zombie giant. I'm just imagining all of those sensational elven terrain pieces with lots of extra foliage around them and such. And, well, a nice little painted backdrop that looks even more like a Rivendell, Lothlorien, whatever. And who knows if I'm able to stream using the phone. Maybe we'd actually be able to do some, well, some of the large-scale terrain pieces. But also maybe even stream, uh, well, stream some of the games too, but maybe some of the painted backdrops. I don't know. Uh, the phone thing really seems to be working really good for, for Jinx, so uh, maybe that's something to really consider. instead of being sort of chained and shackled to the uh, work desk here like this. Uh, maybe not as huge of a crack of that here. We're just going to look at this. That's uh, something we really couldn't do with the acrylics now. That's for sure. Uh, sometimes, too, the characters, they also get named, well, like Jeeves and Birdie. That's uh, a couple of characters that, uh, well, sort of makes Kathy and I just laugh from the old uh, Jeeves and Worcester TV show. And then, of course, sometimes we name characters, uh, you know, like after uh, characters from L.O.L.O., This is Nighthawk. Do you hear me over? Some cracks on the top of that. Ooh, a little more here. That is quite the topographical map up there. We, I think we could really break that up, I suppose, with the, doing more of these cracks here. There's quite a few uh, areas here that seem like that's uh, where they're uh, emanating from, so why not? Here, let's do some of that. I might get a couple of more of my highlights on some of these cracks over here. Uh, especially maybe up towards the top. Lighten that up a little, too. And i got to figure out, the, like with this stuff here, I don't know, I might just hit it with a slightly lighter, at least along the edge here. That might be helpful. I don't know if that's, I don't really want to go too much lighter than that. It's mostly the radiant blue here. Oh, again, don't want to make too much of an edge on this because this is uh, where we want our attention to be, is over here, right on the, the main event, the glow. Not so much just on regular old dim highlights on stone or metal. Not even sure if this is supposed to be metal out here. Probably supposed to be stone, I would imagine. All right, well, Grey Wolf, thank you so much for hanging out as long as you could here. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Hopefully you have a good day tomorrow. Uh, just a, a quick little program that I'm sure you heard me say that uh, this Saturday, not going to be around this coming Saturday, but we'll, I guess we're doing a Halloween stream. Not sure when that begins, but we are doing a Halloween stream. Uh, 
Uh, we'll have to find something appropriately spooky to paint on Halloween. I think I have plenty of things that fit the bill. And also, too, uh, for everybody that's out there, there are actually some Reaper miniatures on the uh, on my eBay there. There's stuff that was painted on stream during some of the Reaper virtual con or Re virtual Reaper con events. Just your kind of typical one piece metal Reaper miniatures. Very, very appropriate for D and D. I'm gonna do a, Oh yeah, this crack right here. See, it's got. Uh, we're gonna actually have to reverse the light here. It's gonna have to come from above instead of underneath. Uh, same thing here. It's gonna have to come from underneath. Maybe not quite that light. Again, the handy thing about the oil is I could just take my finger and pretty much wipe that away. Ah, uh, so, but geez, Armored Wolf, I don't even remember when they last did Tufts. And how much did they want for those? 15 bucks or something? And is the glue, is it really hard? You know, like the tufts really hard, like some tufts can be, or is it just, uh, well, I'm sure actually no sticking power. Uh, running a Halloween special RPG pen Saturday, uh, more or less Cthulhu in World War II. Wow, Grey Wolf, uh, that sounds really fun. Ah, that, that sounds really cool. So again, I'm just going to find a couple of my other highlights like this here. Now, uh, just coming down this way. So, geez, Armored Wolf, uh, I, I think you said it was, it was 15 bucks for those, and there wasn't a lot of tufts in there, was there? So, <laughs> is it like the fail cast of tufts? They're absolutely hideous. I don't know. You know what? Uh, if I go, oh, I put all of my brushes over here. There's one. I am going to do this over here. We'll just do this over here, too. Oh, there's also a baffle. Um, I don't know where the heck that is. That's somewhere around, but. There's actually more to this. There's, there's some more to this forge right here. This was definitely the easiest to fit on camera and, well, certainly most dramatic to actually see. And like I said, this, this entire thing a couple hours ago had no paint on it at all. It was just some primer brushed on, and that's it. So 15 bucks for 124 Uh, yep, Armored Wolf, well, gee whiz, it's, even the ones that were, you know, the tufts are actually pretty nice, and, and I like them, their glue is terrible, I mean, there, there is, yours is the only one, and again, uh, Armored Wolf has been working on developing a line of basing products, and of course, the Armored Wolf will soon be the only purveyor of the crushed glass snow, See if we can get this guy out here without destroying everything. So yeah, the crushed glass snow, you'll only be able to get that from Armored Wolf quite soon. Well, pretty much now that's how it is, because uh, Secret Weapon doesn't exist anymore. They are, they are gone. And that's where I used to get that stuff. That's the only place I know of that used to have it, but now it will be Armored Wolf's turn. Uh, yeah, just uh, land dressed uh, right in that right. They're just, I mean, it'll stick to uh, anything. I mean, it'll, it'll even, it'll even stick to wet oil paint at times. I mean, it's it's amazing what those things will be able to stick to. 
Uh, I don't want to get too much of the thinner on this, but I'm going to try and lighten up maybe a couple of the corners a smidge more here. But not all along it. Do you notice there's no real edge highlight along there? We're not looking for the edge highlights uh, here because again, well, the light's coming from underneath anyway, right? Bit more of our light here. Still haven't exactly determined. You know what? I'm going to change that from more of the yellow to more of an orange here along the edge. Do the same thing along here. And yeah, maybe even have that light orange almost go up to the right to the ledge here. That That makes more sense, I think. this stuff back here. I just put some some more lighter color down there I don't know, about 15-20-ish minutes ago hoping that we've had it sitting there long enough so that we can kind of get back in here and spread that around and soften it. Yes we can but still looking to do the the, the stone texture, well the faux stone texture because again it's going to hide it's going to hide all of the crazy little striations. Again, this is FDM printed, so you have to try and hide that stuff as uh, best as you can. It's just, uh, it's inevitable. You're going to get that. So I'm back here to the red touch of the orange. Because I noticed there's a couple of these like orangey red patches on here and I kind of like that it's that uh, well this stuff is so opaque huge advantage for us and oh it looks like uh, Landrest has uh, got some pictures of the armored wolf tuff so please go check that out uh let's land our discord right there so yes, go go check those out and see how amazing they are. We've got oh here we go. So here's some of the armored wolf the the flower tufts and these are not like the big clumps, right? Basically, most flower tufts are like a big clump of foam on top of some very you know not not much variation in the in the stuff. I don't have them right next to me here to show you. Otherwise, I would, but I do believe I have, well, I know I have a bunch of basing videos on the Patreon page. I think there's even a couple on the YouTube channel where we're using the Armored Wolf Tufts. Heck, there's probably some of our Twitch sessions here where we're using some Armored Wolf Tufts. Now, again, they're more much more artistic. Uh, I've had a lot of flower tufts where all it is is just a gigantic blob of foam. Whereas Armored Wolf, when he does those, some of them only have quite literally one flower on them. And others have maybe three or four. And the, there's a difference in the height of the, well, the grass and the tuft itself. It's not till I actually started really using a lot of different types of tufts that I started to see, like, yeah, the color on these things is A, too bright. There's not much height difference in these. They're all the same size. And, of course, then there's the glue, where pretty much all others fail. So, again, do it a little bit of our... Take a look. look at this, just the two fingers on the brush once again. Yeah, I've, I always, it's weird. I've got, I got so used to the Armored Wolf ones that I had to use some other one just to match, right, uh, existing things that had already been done before the Armored Wolf Tufts. And, oh my gosh, I forgot to have my glue out. 
you, you get like like you say, Landry, you get spoiled because you don't have you don't have to use that glue to get them to stick. I don't have to do anything fancy here to get that paint to stick because lo and behold, while this is not dry by any means, it has set well enough that I can just kind of come in here and do this sort of stipply semi-dry brush again to create that much more of the stone texture here. Oh, and the other good thing about the oil paints is if you do, uh, you know, you're doing your dry brushy stuff or whatever, you can actually fill in some of the striations too. Yeah, especially if you go really thick on your oil paint, you will fill in some of those striations. And uh, right now, Armour, again, with uh, it's challenging getting packing with packaging stuff for the tufts. So that's why Armored Wolf, they still do it, lots of research there trying to figure out the best way to package those. Mm, that's, that's too much orange. Going to go with something that's a little bit more of the red here. And then let that, see, we're letting that mix with what's there. See how we're just stippling that on there? And just a nice little bit of stippling right there. We get very efficiently masking some of the stray, especially on this side of things. I mean, here we're we're trying to mask it with some of the cracks and other things. Here, let me see if I can throw a little bit of our orange around this. Do the same on this side over here. Take some of that away. And I know I've got one of my blending brushes here with some darker stuff on it. Van Dyke Brown. So I think uh, it. I don't know if there was two baffles. I know there's one, and I just kind of it goes into these little holes right there again to keep our forge uh, well stocked with some some heat. Uh, some indigo, Van Dyke brown again. Oh no, maybe a little bit of the asphaltum here. Just gonna hit the floor there. Maybe even that piece over here. We could really see the striations on that, my goodness. And then we can also do stuff like this too. You know, there's nothing that says we can't put some, do some stains like this. Why not? Soften this up. Do the same over here. Again, using our blending brush, really scumbling this, and we're going to darken that down too. Again, there's a, I think wherever you have these, uh, depending how steep the angles are, I think, right, uh, Landress, you're going to get more, you'll have even more of the striations show up the more steep the angles are. Once again, we're going to fade some of that. Let's uh, take some of our dark stuff here and just uh, that chimney, the stack here. Just hit that and make that also darker. Like so. Oh, what the heck, we got a little bit of our purling black. That's our dark green. Also going to dry brush a little bit of that, because it's not really going to be any darker, but, well, green and uh, red are opposites, aren't they? So that little bit of opposite, we'll, oh, we certainly need some over here. Let 
and you can see how it covers really well even though it's just a just a dry brush there yeah we needed to solidify these edges a bit more here so now our, our little bit of reddish orange that shows up more because i darkened this now because we made that lighter because we darkened basically everything that's around it here maybe we'll also get uh some of this darker green around this uh, like some scorching or whatever here was a little bit more of our van dyke brown yeah so that's uh there we go it looks a little bit more scorched around this Again, look at just kind of attacking that with some stippling here. And now I do have my brush. I'm going to try and see if I can get some of our lightest light. I got a point of it here. A little bit of our brilliant yellow pale. So something like that. Just, I don't know. Like there's an actual glow coming out of there. 